Earnings season is almost over and the results have been on fire. Alex Kenji, president of O'Leary Ventures. We have 85% of companies in the S&P 500 reporting earnings so far. 72% of them beat estimates. What does that tell you? It's been a great season. I think it's going to get even better. Uh, GDP came in a little light, uh, but I think that is going to be the next indicator to come roaring back. And the other big statistic here is, according to facts, that earnings for this current reporting season rose 10% year over year, another double-digit percentage gain. Does this warrant higher stock prices? Because we're already at record highs. I think it does, actually. I mean, you've, you do have a lot more cash in the economy because of the six years of quantitative easing that happened. That's a factor. Earnings really, really strong. And now we're also seeing job growth and even wage growth, mm -hmm. uh, finally, as the first indications of that. But we know that August is a pretty tricky month for the markets. Back in 2011, of course, we had the credit rating downgrade yep. in 2013. Stocks rose throughout the year, but in August they were down about 3, or three to 4%. 2015, of course, we had the flash crash. So mm. is there tail risk coming in August? And, and I guess how should you hedge your portfolio for that? I think there's always tail risk. There's always the kind of August randomness that can happen. Typically, people take a little break in the summer and then come back in the fall. But at the end of the day, you want a long-term horizon and you want to step back and think about fundamentals, right? So I wouldn't make any sudden moves just because of which calendar month uh, it is. That being said, you do want to move your portfolio around slightly whenever there are big changes. And the big one we're seeing now is the lowering of the U.S. dollar relative to where it was a little while ago. So I yes. think that's an interesting play. What implications does that have? I mean, certainly if we see a comeback in the dollar, could that threaten stock prices at these current levels? Because we saw the dollar surge on Friday's jobs report. Well, I think the, the, the movement in the dollar can be good or bad for different. They're winners and losers, right? Mm -hmm. So as an investor, you want to think about, are my, are my assets priced in, in am I holding stocks that are going to benefit from relative changes in that dollar. So stronger dollar, you want to be more in smaller cap stocks where most of their sales are stateside. Weaker dollar, you're going to do better on large caps, companies that have lots of sales overseas, where when you translate that back into local currency, you're actually getting a lift. And the weak dollar is one reason why the S&P 500 has outperformed the Russell 2000 so far this year by mm -hmm. a pretty big percentage. All right, Alex Kenji, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Scott.